Good evening, good evening, good evening. I want to talk about a few things that are weighing heavily on my mind. Two things happened today. I was going to talk about something else. But the first thing I'm going to talk about is about hotepness, pro-blacks, and the mindsets that many of these people have. There's a group on Facebook I was a member of. And someone put up this, this post today that regardless of how good you are, regardless of how much money you get, you still will be disrespected and mistreated as a black man. Something I vigorously disagree with, but they were like, yep, yep, this is true, this is true, this is true. And I'm like, no wonder every time I post something in here, it, the, the crowd goes against me because all of these folks have low expectations of themselves. They don't really feel that they can be powerful. They don't feel that they can be able-bodied men. They don't feel that they could transform their lives. Like that stupid song by Jay-Z, Still an In. And if you know what I know, if you have read The Power of Your Subconscious Mind, you know that every thought matters. Every thought. All of this stuff matters. And you got these people around here who are killing their dreams of success by the way that they think. And they don't want to change how they think. I was sitting there like, this is some low expectation having stuff today. But they embrace it. Yeah, man, you know, I'm black. So I'm always going to be mistreated. I'll never be respected. I got, you know, the story of OJ. Who got away with murder, many people feel. Because he had money. That ain't never happened before. But one of the things that disheartens me about these mindsets is low expectations and no hope for a better life. You know, because I, I know things. I've been places. I've been in the room. Kevin Samuels has a great video. You belong in the room. Go check it out. You belong in the room. Your grandparents, your granddaddy, your grandma, they built this country. You belong in the room. But we have so many people who feel that they don't belong in the room, that they can't get in the room, that they'll be disrespected if they get in the room. So they don't even try to get in the room. They don't even try to apply to be in the room. And one of the things... Oh, let me just say this before I go on. You got today and tomorrow, the prices of everything in Hustler Kung Fu Life Skills goes up Sunday morning. Just letting y'all know. And, I, I, you know, I've just had problems with this group because I, I didn't actually ask to join in. I was jumped in like a gang. You know, someone just added me to the group and I stayed for a while. But today was the final straw. Because I saw something posted that I know for a fact is fundamentally untrue. And then, you know, the low-key hating will start. Because, you know, I, I, I had to leave. Because, you know, I wanted to educate people, but you can't educate people who don't want to be educated. They don't want to hear that. You know, that's not true. You can start a business. You can get money. You get respect. When I walk in the bank, hey, Mr. Cameron. Well, come over here, Mr. Cameron. You can get in this line. I don't know if that, that's, that sounds like respect to me. But you can't tell these people nothing. You cannot. And I'm just sitting there and I'm like, you know, I got to go. Because this is going to weigh on my spirit that I'm dealing with all of these negative people. These negative people who don't ascend to the seat of power. When you start a business, you give yourself the percepts of power. 
and you have a classification of black folks who say, I don't care how much money you get, they still gonna treat you like an end. It's not true. It's not true. Video I put up this morning, the Jewish blueprint. Once you become an indispensable part of society, a lot of that goes away. Facts. We got Jews, we got Asians, we got two groups of people. If you study what happened, but we still have people who are embracing this hood and ghetto culture, keeping it black. And that is more important than personal success, keeping it black, whatever that means to whatever black person it is. Because the thing is, this is what I feel keeping it black. I, I was born black, I'm going to die black. It's a birthright. It isn't how I act. It isn't the words that I use. It isn't who I put my dang lang in. Born black man, going to die black man. It's a birthright thing. But many people, depending on your behavior, the clothes you wear, you can lose your blackness. It's a very slippery slope. I got called a sugar coon because I was talking about my neighborhood that I live in. And you got people out here who are so in need of mental help, need to lay on someone's couch and talk to somebody because I was like, did you watch the video? If I was taught, now if I had got in this neighborhood and I went to prison, I used to sell drugs, that would have been okay. You know, you know, we know he's a real, he's a real one. You know, he's out here in these streets slaying that stuff. That would have been okay if I got in this neighborhood because, you know, I, I used to slang drugs. I went to prison and stuff. All right, that's cool. He did it the black way. That is stupid. Let's see what we got going on in here. All right, got to know this again today. Wrong mindset, people. Get past it. Trav, Uncle G, the mind is the hardest thing to work out. It is. I'm doing 30 day challenges and listening to you and David Goggins because I'm going to keep saying what I'm going to keep saying because I know it is to be my personal truth. Stock, stock, stack the flipper. What's up, Glenn? And the whole teppers or half steppers got some of my family. The victim mindset because you know. These people were never slaves. They don't even know anyone the slave, but they act like it was just yesterday. Guns to trap. It is, man. My head got heavy yesterday, pouring negative stuff in my head while I'm working to enforce positive stuff. I was getting a tension headache, but I got to keep pushing. Keep working on your mental, man. Keep working on your mental. What's up, Crep Junkie? Haha, ha, when tellers see the bank account up, they get a lot more friendly. They do ride real estate. They do. What's up, Blinding Boo, Edward? Each since black home ownership, home ownership rate, the lowest in 50 years, but in real less than enough, all other races that has gone up. What's up, Johnny Edward? Erica Williams, oh my God, some guy on, on Instagram is scamming right now. No one's snitching because he used to be a drug dealer. Now he's some black hero. Th that is one of the craziest things. If I was in this house and I got here through a path of going through selling drugs, being part of the criminal system, that would have been applauded versus me Doing it the correct, legit, legal, and legit way. Well, you know, he a lame. He, he ain't about these streets. He ain't built for these streets. He ain't built for this life. I didn't choose thug life. Thug life chose me. And you see this, and you see who embrace it, and you see, you know, the YouTube channels that talk about this stuff, and their views are massive. 
If being conscious got you money, the whole world would be woke. Wow. Christian Emerson, if you want to sow with the eagles, you cannot surround yourself with chickens. Most people have a chicken mindset. And when then the dudes be like, nah, man, you're a fourth class citizen in the U.S. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Cough, Jay Morrison. What's up, Rashar? You know, because this, this is what it is. People want to be down so bad that they will not do things that are productive that will enrich their lives. Like saving money, like this earning app, you know, good looking out, Erlen. $100. You should have four to five hundred to two thousand dollars in the savings account as just anybody, anybody. You know, this hood culture, and because you know, I got into it with the owner of the group, and then he started low-key hating talking about my story. We weren't even talking about that. The conversation was about do tall black men get the same privileges as tall white men? It has been my experience. I get even more perks because I'm six foot one and I lift weights. Black Shingo, PhD grad with a lot of student debt. It is a, ever it is a religion at this point because you can't talk to these people. When I saw that post and I saw everybody co-signing on it, I was like, nobody here is understand personal power and freedom. And you know what? That's cool, but they're not interested in learning because I, I was getting ready to, I was like, don't even start. They don't want to hear about personal power. They don't want to hear about wealth development. They don't, they don't, they want to st stick around and keep commiserating about things that aren't true. Like I, I put this challenge out, like name all of the rich black athletes that have been shot by the cops. Name one. Movie stars. Name one. It ain't happened. Wealth, money insulates you from a lot of bullshit. It's reality, but once again, that doesn't fit the narrative. The cucumber challenge. What the hell is that? You know, because <clears throat> uh, because I'm making a lot of changes. I'm not only raising the prices of the courses and stuff. I'm going to enroll the mentoring, uh, put out a mentoring program. I'm gonna just let it fly because. I'm going to keep doing this work here. You can be black. You can be successful. You can be respected. And you do not have to listen to these old Negro spiritual cooning ad. I think Jay-Z at points is a coon. That whole story. Still, still an end. That's a coon song. Regardless of what you do, that's how you're going to be treated. I, I don't believe in that. Give you an example. Franz Fallon, a brother who's a psychiatrist, was the father of modern day terrorism. Yeah, a brother actually founded the principles that Al Qaeda and all this other stuff are doing. If you talk about economic consciousness, you speak the language of Lucifer for them. And th this is one of the things someone posted the real hotels about money. I have not seen that once. <clears throat> I haven't seen it. I haven't heard it. It's all about this community activism, looking out for the poor people and embracing hood culture. You know, I mean, yes, sadly, there are some people who are in jail who did not do the crime. It ain't most of them. That's one here and there. Most of them did it. We're doing some and deserve to be there. And the embracement of convicts and felons is something new in the black community. Once you you were an embarrassment if you were a felon or a convict. Good, decent folk didn't associate with you. Now, my boy John, he came home. You know, 
I, I was hearing this and I was like, come on. Oh, this means someone just got out of the prison. It is an elaborate process of celebration. My boy came home. Where did he go? Was he on the farm? No, he was in jail. He was in prison. Crap junkie preaching to a trial. I feel like after slavery, black people were diehard about education and being entrepreneurs and being the best of the best. Today, not so much. I think there is a group of black folks who are on that path and there's a group of black folks who are not. Poor black trash doing stupid challenges. Erica Williams. These be the same guys that will smash any chick with a fat ass. Big booty Betty. Quinn Jackson, I separated myself from the Cooney. Good for you. Franz Fallon is a great author of psychoanalysis. Good Lord, Edward Anderson. No, nah, man, I, I just saw that post. Regardless of what you do, you're not going to be treated at, with respect. I know that to be fundamentally false. I have been in the room. I get treated with great respect because of my accomplishments by white people, Asian people, and black people. I, I'm just sitting there like, I can't, I can't, you know, th it, this is just wearing on my mental. I mean, Hollywood prep, I mean, that just got on my spirit. God forbid you speak proper English. Quinn Jackson, they'd be, be like free big dev, even though he killed people. That's the stuff I'm talking about. Tone Fitness, I never heard of Hotep until I went to prison, but ironically, mostly Hotep brothers were about money. I don't know what these Hoteps out here are talking about. Uh, the hotels in prison, they, they got a whole different mindset. Jundi, if you see a black chick's social profile that has stuff like social activists. Yeah, pick world, that's going to happen. YouTube be hating, man. I mean, you know, when I when I see this stuff and it, it's about, you know, once you read the book, The Power of Your Subconscious Mind, that starts everything. Every thought that you have matters. You cannot be having negative thoughts. And these these are these are deeper than thoughts. These are personal philosophies. These are dyed in wolves. No matter what I can do, I'm still going to be disrespected and mistreated. This is why I got the dominant male course. I'm going to tell y'all something. I don't think I ever spoke on this before. But when I, that summer, when I was wilding out, my book sales were zooming had all this time. I was exploring the Craigslist protocols. I felt like such a man. I didn't feel like a black man. I felt like a man. And, you know, because what was happening was I had all this money coming in. I had this newfound prestige, fame. I had a little power. I had name brand recognition. I was, you know, a founding father of the reseller community. And I, I know what it feels like to have power and respect. I was having chicks coming over to my place, bowing down every, just virtually every night. And I had money. I had freedom. I had women. And I was happy. And I really wish all of y'all could feel like that. That's such a feeling to be happy, to have money, 
to have freedom, to have choices, to have options. And I, I keep talking about my experiences and they keep offending people. I, every time I do a, a, where the rich people of Atlanta video live, I get these whole tap broke, low expectations. Like, man, you sugar cooning. Because I'm talking about where I live and how I got here. I wrote a book. Like once again, and I, I say it, if I had been, you know, a drug dealer and got here, that would have been cool. Because he's a real one. Not the fact that I wrote a book that changed my life and changed the future of everyone that comes after me. Mm -mm, they ain't sexy. They ain't black. They ain't black. Writing a book, that's some stuff white folks do. You got to do it the black way. You got to keep it real. You know, speaking of that, like Chris Rock, I got to admit, I enjoyed when he got divorced because he has this little skit like, well, you know, he's the type of black guy that only going to date white women. There seems to be this notion that of, of being black enough, having enough black in you, being whatever that is, as if, and if you don't have it, <clears throat> you're kicked out of the community or you're denigrated. Just news, Glendon is true for them because you have what you say. Long to see the setup of an LLC challenge. You'll never see that, man. You were balling, pardon their language. Sarah Holly, Afro pessimism. Cornell West once said the greatest threat to the black community is not the KK, but the sense of hopefulness for the future. Sarah Holly, I co sign that. Because when I saw that crap today, I immediately cut out that group. I mean, because they were co-signing in and like, yep, true, true. I was like, this ain't true. Who are you people? Where are you living? What kind of lives do you have for you to buy into this BS? Power is the ultimate aphrodisiac. Henry Kissinger, uh, Bashanti Thoth, I agree. Ganja. Thanks, Crab Junkie, for the, the British pounds. Be real. When I tell people it's not about race, it's about the economics, they say I'm cooning. It's like it's it's uh, forbidden, forbidden to speak about money and economics. Or they call you bed witch when black dudes stay ignoring you. There's a whole verbiage there's a whole lexicon of language used to describe black people who are not black enough and i think this concentration on being black enough is a distraction i used to watch the apprentice and you know with donald trump and everything and there was his sister and she wanted to do something for the community of harlem and I was like, she's going to lose. That wasn't the job. That wasn't the task. But she's trying to keep it black. So people would like give her props. Uh, Sierra, yes, I believe it was from his book, Race Matters Was Possible. I got him mixed up with Shelby Steele. Each sense is funny how people that proclaim to be pro-black or black nationalists are also the ones who love to use the N-word casually. Man, you know, y'all know me. I don't like that word. Neither fashion or form. Don't use it on my channel and I delete comments because I don't feel that anyone should be using it. And this is another source of contention because as you are each sense, you're correct. These are the same people who use that word every other, every other, you know, every other sentence. And it, it's, you know, you ever talk to someone who uses this word copiously? They, they can't. It's like it's indoctrinated on their, their cortex and they have to use it. <clears throat> 
And, uh, you know, another thing that happened to me today, I, I had a consult. And this is, I had to get this knowledge. Because they asked me, what is the one thing that forced you to get all this knowledge? I put myself in a position where I had to grow. You know, on that whole path of leading that boarding house, going to those jobs, you know, looking back, if I had the mentality of these pro blacks and hoteps, I would have felt strange. Now, it was a racist environment. The other guys that worked there, I remember, you know, six months before my departure, I walked in. Jim was an owner this weekend. Ken Scott. I'll never forget that. And they, they got quiet as hell when I walked in the room because they knew that shit was wrong. Six months later, I was gone. So it was a racist environment, not like they were calling me the N-word or doing stuff to me. It's just they thought they were better because they were white. That was it. So I took a bunch of clients with me, left to start my own thing. More black so-called conscious people need to focus on building wealth and entrepreneurship is always talking about history of debating each other intangible things like whose religion is the best. Man, I see these conversations. Crep Junkie TV never understood the mindset that's keeping it black, man, keeping it broke. I'm with you. Quentin Jackson, I always call light brothers kid. Every now Black people tell me have light skin privilege. It is foolishness. What's up, Rose Master Diana? Omega, I'm gray and identify as a thing. You're funny. Be real. Most people become hotels when they are broken, economically deprived. I would agree with that. Um, because, you know, the second thing that happened today that I had to think about is why do I have all this knowledge? And I kept putting myself in the position because one of the things I learned in the boarding house that the reason I was in that boarding house was I didn't have an income problem. I had a knowledge problem. I didn't have any in-demand skill sets. Nothing. I was a good guy. I was a hardworking guy. I was an average man. But there was nothing remarkable, remarkable about me. And I made some bad decisions. Didn't save money. If I had saved money, I wouldn't have been there. That was one of the reasons I'm fanatical about saving money now. Johnny Walton, how do you stay out of an entitlement environment, start your own businesses if one way? Absolutely. Erica Williams always talking about stupid topics, no income producing topics. Man, that right there gets me. David Lee on me. Racist a scam made by the church. No, nah, race is a real thing. Troy Grover. He says, be real, you're absolutely correct. Had a roommate who became a hotel and at the very same time was on food stamps when he became a hotel. D. Clark, your Jewish blueprint video was a straight either for the people who want to get babies. Hey, man, I, I'm just giving you guys what you have to do to separate yourself from your current situation. Because you can be black and beautiful in this country and you can be successful and respected. I'm here. I'm a prime example. And like when I saw that, I was just like, you got to be kidding me. Who are these people hanging around? No wonder they're leaving the country to go get some trim because they can't get anything nice and delicious here. Because going into the dominant man, these guys are not leaders. And once again, with the dominant man stuff, you are a leader. And these guys are not leaders because I'm just sitting there like, and I wanted to respond so bad, but I was like, you know what? There's this group here. They think alike. They act alike. They, they, as Erica pointed out, they, they ain't never a topic talking about how to get some money. 
not one topic. It's always about how to get chicks, which country is the best country, you know, getting my visa, my passport and all this, but nothing about the basic fundamental of economics and wealth development that will free your ass from the matrix. I mean, come on, a few months ago, I had a heart attack. I, I'm still living where I'm living. The repo man didn't come get my cars because they paid for it. They were paid for it when coming off the lot. I didn't lose nothing because I don't have any debt. Economic liberation is pop, total liberation. And, you know, I'm going to keep preaching this. I'm going to keep having messages like this. And I'm going to keep talking to y'all because I, this sense of hopelessness that Sierra Holly talked about is very pervasive. Like, no matter what I do, I'm going to be treated like a black man and disrespected. Maybe if you did things differently versus spending all your time talking about black centered issues. I think Grant Cardone's a beast. So, you know, just once again, this question that was asked, what forced you, What? because it was just like, what's this one thing? And being in that boarding house, experiencing real pain, being in, being very uncomfortable. I was always uncomfortable in that house. I never got comfortable. I never would drink. I never drunk. I, the whole time I was there, I never took one drink. Just, just, I was like, this is just such a bad situation. And, you know, you can be successful, man. Now, you know, and also uh, during this consult, they told me some other stuff. They took some other courses and they said, you the only one that break this stuff down in digestible bits. Because other people just go over the topics. I didn't even know this because I haven't taken these people's courses. And one of the things that you got to understand, your color is an asset, not a hindrance. Black people are colorful. You get noticed. You can use that to make some money. Versus sticking your head down like singing old Negro spirituals like we black, we disrespected, we can't accomplish, blah, 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 blah. Because, see, I study history. The white man is catching hell right now. White male suicide is skyrocketing. White male drug addiction is skyrocketing. Because things aren't so rosy for them. And, you know, my theory is the genes of the warriors on the white side and the black side have been denigrated with these beta male cuck genes. You just don't. This is why I feel my dominant male series course is going to be so successful, because I've already had feedback from like uh, some people that they're, they're, they're turning their relationships around. The reason your woman nagging you is because she wants you to be a leader. She don't want you sitting at home playing video games, living all comfortable. She can't get wet on that. Leadership issues and lack of money is 80% of the problems I hear. If you ain't leading, you ain't going to have no money. Registered nursing suicide has risen? Really? Competition is tough, man. But once again, like, our, like we just started on this dominant man thing. Because I'm going to tell you what my plans are for that brand. I'm, re I'm running paid traffic on the Facebook page to get the likes up. So I, once I get enough, you know, the four or five thousand people then I'm going to create a lookalike audience and start promoting the products. Then I'm going to have people, you know, because there will be a Facebook ad that's going to take people to a dominant male webinar. 
And then from the webinar, that will take them to the product. Because, you know, from all my study and research, that's how you do it. Because unless you're doing a physical product, having an ad <clears throat> that takes them straight to the product could be a waste of money. Omega, I don't know what you're talking about. College is closing down. Richard Madison, what's the difference between the H university packages? One package, you, the most expensive packages, you get a live training. The basic one, you don't, but the price of both of those are going up. Crip Junkie TV, it's hard to find like-minded black folks that have experienced growing up hood but want to grow. I have a come online to look abroad to speak about growth with my people. It, it is a problem because... One of the biggest things I hate is when someone uses the N-word on me like I'm supposed to be cool with that. I'm always offended. And I've had conversations with people. It's like, you don't use that on me. But we black. I'm like, that doesn't excuse it. I think it's stupid. I don't think anyone should be using it. Deborah Ann Matthews, I think my friend heard the hustle man say this and the hustle man say that for the last time. Good Lord. MJ, listen to the GM Alpha. I don't like it. I was forced into it since my spouse would not step up. I mean, you know, it is just ridiculous how many people throw that word around and say it with pride. And it's the same low expectation having hoteps who don't want to talk about uh, money. Uh, I mean, you know, I like O'Shea. O'Shea has brought me on this show a few times. And whenever I talk about economics and making money and starting business, these are his lowest rated videos. They want to talk about big booty vetty, go get a lot of views. They want to talk about interracial dating, go get a lot of dudes. Want to talk about white women, but talking about building a business, the language of business, LLCs, holding, uh uh, it, I'm just not going to get a lot of people that, who, who are interested in that. They're not interested in the tools that create true liberation. Eric Williams, nope, X play video games and complain too much about work. See, I got part of that old man responsibility growing up. I grew up in a neighborhood full of men who went to work. They went to work every day. I was indoctrinated in that culture. Uh, Erica, play video games and complain too much about work. If you got a job you hate, get another one to start a business. Roadmaster that totally brainwashed. Johnny Walker, see some people have a fear of failure. I think it's deeper than that. They don't even want to try, man. I'm going to add my reserves about Shay. I stopped watching him like eight months ago, especially when the fallout with ARC, but I digress. You know, uh, he's been cool by me. He since building a business requires being more responsible, not be not many people want that life. I, I agree with you. It's about quality, not quantity, bro. The 80 20 rule. Deborah Ann Matthews, I had resume business and expanded to offer notary and apostle services, taking the class now with Andre. Excellent teaching plus loads of support. I mean, one of the things you, 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 you know, because that, that just got to me, man. You know, and I, I really wish 
there was another black man on YouTube talking about the stuff because I know I ain't the only one. I live in the neighborhood with other dudes like me. I see it all the time. This brother married to this banging. I mean, she is flawless. This girl's so cute. Even her toes are cute. And they got two little kids. And I don't think they're from here. But he's black. She's Asian. See him up in the Whole Foods all the time. Rod's movie. A lot of broken folks out here. That's why the idea of getting a check has broken. Taken off like wildfire. Yeah, because, you know, I, I believe that people should get reparations. But I'm not holding my breath waiting on someone to cut me a check. I'm out here... <clears throat> Killing dragons, making my own way. And also, if I get a check, you know what? That, that would be investment money. I have no need to spend that money on creature comforts or wants. So if, you know, all black folks got like $250,000, bam, that would go straight to investments. I wouldn't even spend a penny. Single moms, bad black women. I mean, there because I, I see this separation on the uh, new disruptive male. I got a video talking about the new black woman. She's in shape. She works out. She's not steeped in ghetto culture. And I, I should do the new black man because the separation is happening. You know, the progressive black people and the non-progressive black people. And the hood, every time I get in with someone, because I, I see these dudes, and you could tell who, who's embracing hood and ghetto culture. It's in their language, because this dude's like, well, I grew up middle class. Man, if I saw you on the street, there ain't no way in hell I would think you were middle class. You look like one of those street urchins from the hood. <clears throat> Right, Roadmaster, I have capital and the ability to acquire capital, but I don't have the business knowledge. Well, you know, that's what this channel is for, man. Because one of the things that I see with this low expectation having stuff, because, I mean, it got to me. It was just like, why do they keep posting this crap? There, you know, as Erica said, there's no, there's no topics about how to produce more money. Because... You know, if they were real G's going to these other countries, they would want to go like these, these countries like G's and ballers and stay in the best places and have the money. They just wishing a prayer and get me over there. <clears throat> I may do it. I mean, you know, he was like, see, half of my family is like the Cosby's. So I know what black middle class look like. And this dude don't look like, because th this is one of the problems. Um, statistically, the children of black middle class or upper middle class or even wealthy black folks typically end up poor because they're trying to keep it real. They're trying to indoctrinate themselves in street culture. It, it, it's a sad thing. Gunge is how you carry yourself. I went to a product photography workshop and I was the only black guy there. No hostility. Actually, people were asking me for help using their camera. Mostly women there. Been my same experience. Dan is always scheduling is a large part of success. I talked today to a young professional who's worn out due to the lack of it. Uh, Crep Junkie TV. The funny thing with seeing anything that looks remotely hood is the predicated outcome always arrives like clockwork. Pretty much. <clears throat> My mom's side of the family's middle class. M. Jim, some people always want others to use their time and energy to solve their problems. Or make their lives more comfy, but look at your sideways when they tell them to use their own. Each sense, I remember the study about black children from wealthy parents becoming poor 
for embracing hood culture. Funny enough, my roommate fits the exact phenomenon. Christian Amerson of Hoteps were the, some real, they would go out and honor our ancestors by slaying some dragons and putting up some real wins. You know, going back to what each sense says in M sense, remember Robert S. Smith who paid for the Morehouse class, he paid their student loan. You had people debating that his blackness because he was married to a white woman. It's like, well, you know, he ain't really helping the black community. He don't really deserve props for that. To be honest, those hoteps give off a weird energy. All right, Cody, because, you know, I want to keep talking about this stuff. And, you know, I just wanted to share this today because that upset me. I'm like, I'm in the group. I, I put my life up on Facebook. I talk about it on YouTube. And it's like I, I had someone I don't really talk to anymore. And it's like, well, you know, you just got lucky. All this hard work, all of this effort ain't luck. Because luck's going to run out, but talent keeps producing. Mm, Google will give any small business a free website for one year. This could help blacks in business. Mm, I didn't know that Google did that. That's cool. You got to be productive. You got to be out here to get this Wi-Fi bread because, you know, just seeing that crap. And this is a group of black men, so-called progressive black men. And it's, it's on this victimhood mentality. And I, I just don't believe in that. And the things I talk about that you could be black and you can win. You can win, baby. And, you know, it, it's just, I have not found black being inconvenient or a hardship. Last time I was pulled over by a cop, I got a warning. I, I just don't go through these things that, and once again, if you pour white, you pour Latino, you pour black, yeah, the police are going to mess with you because that's typically where the crime is happening in those neighborhoods. Facts. That's why I stopped listening to Progressive Griff from Public Enemy 10 years ago. Humphrey Jones, I'm a hotel. I know this through that pro blacks only attack other black men. So thank you for your content. Yeah, that, that's one of the things I get attacked all of the time. Um, the the dude with the sugar cooning comment is like, yeah, you date white women. You mentioned that three times. I didn't even mention that in the video. So he's watched the channel. He's seen the some content. I, I don't mention that in every video. But he's seen enough to know. And what I think it is, is... You know the monkey experiment where this one monkey's getting more marshmallow and fruit than the other monkey, and the other monkey notices that he's getting more than the other monkey got pissed, and that's what I think is happening. A previous boss of mine used to have this victim mentality. All right, Maggie. We got some funny people in the chat. M. Sway, the reality cops make more money in those neighborhoods because if they pull over a brother, there's likely a few in the car. Roadmaster, you didn't mention that in the video, but I heard your thoughts. I know. I'm like, this wasn't even in the video. And one of the things that, you know, I get attacked by these dudes 
who, as <clears throat> Humphrey Jones said, they attack me for being me. So what you got a business, man? You still black. That's their way of saying, like, you ain't no better than me, bruh. We the same. But we're not the same because my mentality is escalated, elevated. I have a beautiful mentality. I think all things are possible. But you think because some white person over here don't may not like black people. And you know what I hate is when somebody black is insulted and they use the N-word to refer to themselves. It is crazy. To teach tone fitness, it really bothers me how when I talk to my family, they complain about life getting harder. But it's not the case with me. The harder I work, the more my vision, the clearer my vision gets. Roadmaster, I love white women and Latinas and Asian women. Mindset is a lot, and sadly, too many hoteps don't engage in productive behavior to build a community. And that's my biggest problem with them. And that's why I talk so much junk. I don't see them building anything. You know, what I do see is a progressive black person over here who's saying, I'm not going to be held down by these false beliefs. I'm going to go out here. I'm going to flex my swag. I'm going to make some money. I'm going to get in this industry. And they, they succeed <clears throat> and they win. Uh, do you think it's just lazy thinking in that group of black people part come up with these generalizations? Crep Junkie TV, I think it's an indoctrination of culture. That's what I think. Because, you know, like that, that comment today, that was something that has been indoctrinated and groomed in black people by other black people. You can't win, Jody. Man, don't you be starting no business. That's for white folks. Sit your black ass down, man. You can't do this. You just black. This is why I say they have low expectations of self and they try to bring them on this channel because I'm just like, you got to be kidding me. You know, first it was tall black men don't get the same benefits as tall white men. Bullshit. Man, if you a six foot three, six foot four brother, there's all kinds of benefits for you if you're not steeped in hood and ghetto culture. And, you know, energy. You know, I talked about energy. They didn't want to hear that. Reg Biz. I consider myself pro black, but I also believe in the game of capitalism for whatever reason. People have a resistance to learning the rules. They don't want to do it, man. They don't want to start a business. They want to get these reparations. Space donkey, Willie Lynch never existed. It was sweet, man. You know the white folks ain't going to let you do that. And who, who are these mythical white people who are who show up to stop you from working to three o'clock in the morning in your house. The internet changed everything. You can start a website, sell products, and nobody know you black. Unless you got to put out there that you black. Because you know this is like a black business. Ganja. Reds biz, a lot of pro-blacks from my observation of socialists which I call feminine-based economics. Yeah, the racial boogeyman, like, well, you know, those white folks ain't going to let you do that. I'm like, who are these white folks working to prevent me from being successful? Matter of fact, I've had white folks help me be successful. Well, they ain't supposed to happen. You must be the mythical, magical Negro. There's always one. And, you know, People don't understand about hard work, purpose, dedication. Um, 
it, it's one of the craziest things because I look at my life and, you know, the dominant man thing is exposing stuff because, you know, we got some people here in the chat who've taken the course, got results. And I think this is what's happening with the average man in America. No leadership ability. And this is why MGTO and Red Pill is growing because these guys don't want to be leaders. Once you become a leader, you can lead a woman to do many different things. But if you just out here living, existing, enjoying life, chilling, kick back, you're not really trying to build anything. You're not out here trying to kill any dragons. Your energy is going to be weak. Your presentation is going to be weak. Your game is going to be weak. And what they do is they get in these echo chambers where they keep talking about this BS amongst themselves. Yeah, like, man, you know, you, you can't, like, this whole thing where American women are, are corrupt and there are no good women in America. Have you dated every woman in America? No. There are plenty of good, great women in America. Plenty. But these dudes don't have the physical uh, the masculine frame you know, presentation to activate their submissiveness. <clears throat> Jim Sway, I mean, the internet is everything, man. Existing nature me, the Africana say a lot of American men are lazy. I used to think leadership was essential, but I found out that certain businesses can run themselves. Strayvon TV. I haven't watched him. They need to define good women. There are good, submissive, beautiful, loving women here in these United States of America. There's a bunch of them. But there's a bunch of beta male cucks. You can't excite and engage a woman when you're weaker and more feminine than she is. You completely turn her off. You make that wet, wet, dry up. You're like, Psh, well, ain't nothing happening here tonight, player. And once again, you know, like I said, uh, the dominant male products and stuff are going to be great. Because there's a big need because we've got all of these, as Erica said, these bad moms, these single parent household. Men are not being groomed to be men. You got all these wimpy men. And you got all these commercials that are aimed at women, that they're men's commercials, but they're aimed at women to make women like these wimpy men. It ain't going to happen, man. It ain't going to happen. So. You know, I'm, I'm here to say this is Glendon Cameron, your hustling godfather. I'm going to keep talking about my life. I'm going to keep talking about my successes. I'm going to keep talking about that you can be black in these United States of America and you can win. And I will not be quiet about it because I'm offending all these low expectation having men who don't want to put in the work. Brazil Hall, unfortunately, black people reject starting businesses and learning financial literacy, but they have no problem working for white people. Quentin, she might like him, but he won't win. This is true. Gunja, what based on what I've learned, watch you good women come out when you tap into your masculine, even my mind, falling and stunned, the singing moments, damaged boys. Absolutely, man. The ego's a mofo. Yes, it is. T-tone titness. People waiting for reparations need to start a business and get back their taxes. Christian Emerson, the dominant male course is fire. Buy that shit. Now, I'm going to continue to update it. There's going to be some more stuff going in there. Wimpy produce inferior offspring. Yeah. 
I mean, you know, the thing is, what we have with many black males is a lack of leadership. It's just that simple. And you want to play video games, you know, like uh, simp comedy, like a lot of these black channels and their skits. The, it ain't even funny because it's based on simp behavior. Like, you know, the thing with the chick getting your phone. Or the, it's just simpish. All right, Crep Junkie TV. Aaron V, Native Americans on the Native American reservation have it way worse than any black person in the hood. Cell service sometimes can never be found in the res. There should be no excuses for anyone. And you know, this is, you know, Indians are almost extinct, man. Johnny Wan, I always heard growing up starting a business, you had to worry about taxes. Yeah, and that and a few other things. Reg Biz, the racism stuff really only happens on the employee side of things. On the business side, no one really cares. That's what I've been experiencing. And Johnny Walden, that's why I'm here. I'm talking about these LLCs and holding companies. Uh, there was someone that recently did a video, the downsides of a LLC and holding companies. And I'm just like, dude, really? He always wants to talk about some crazy stuff. <clears throat> so this is, you know, one of the things, man, I just wanted to talk to y'all about this tonight because it, it just pissed me off. And it pissed me off that this group of 1,500, almost 1,600 men, that if I was to add something, it would have been a fight. You know, because I just don't live that life. You know, and I, money and economics. I'm going to tell you, all economics change everything. When you get money, your life changes. Where you live changes. Who you can date changes. Everything changes. And people with money get real respect with people that without money. And being black is not, you know, it's not a hindrance because I was just like, no matter what you do, that is some defeatist simp thinking. Sebastian Williams, some black people just don't know any better. Uh, no, but we're getting ready to start a podcast for the dominant man. Because uh, I feel that needs to be done. I mean, it, it is just really sad. Because, you know, like the whole MGTOW and red pill thing and don't get married, don't have any kids. And some of these guys, as pointed out by Erica Williams, are doing the very thing they're telling other guys not to do, which is hilarious. Money is green, gold, silver, and platinum. This is true. All right, man. I just wanted to get that off my chest. Once again, the price of everything is going up Sunday morning. So, you know, you got tonight and tomorrow. And uh, I'll talk to you guys later.